Hi, I'm Lee Sand Miller with W. Cushing & Company, and this is Third Thursday with Lee Sand in September. September's here. Fall is supposed to be here, although we're in the 80s, muggy, uh, lots of humidity, but hopefully fall and the fall leaves will be here soon. I want to thank Rug Hooking Magazine. This is in conjunction with Rug Hooking Magazine, and I hope you got that your latest magazine, uh, Beautiful Compass, Beautiful Mixed Media, Great issue, 42 finished rugs and projects, and just a wonderful, wonderful magazine to welcome the fall season. Uh, so I hope you get it. You need to look through it. Lots of interesting articles in this one. So, leaves. We all think about leaves, pumpkins, and acorns this time of year. And yes, we've gone through leaves and different ways to hook them, but we're going to explore leaves in a little bit more depth. A lot of you have asked how we do turnovers in leaves, different colors for leaves. So we're going to talk leaves and see where it goes. All right, first thing is, one of the tools in our tool belt is size of cut. Unlike a painter who can paint over, who can use water, who can use an egg wash, we can't do that. Our art takes its form in many different ways, but one of our tools is size of cut. So here we have it in a four. This is two rows of a four, a six, an eight, and uh, an eight and a half. Or no, this is the eight, six. I don't know what that is. Maybe it's a six as well. Four. Let me get my strip sizer. Hold on. Here we go. Let me get my strip sizer. Here, this is another use for your strip sizer. So here we lay it on. There's your eight. It's not, yep, it's an eight and a half. I was right. That's an eight and a half. Here's your eight. See how I'm doing that? I'm laying it down. Eight and a half, eight, six, and you see that for a four. So by using the strip sizer, eight and a half, eight, six, four. Now, same, it's, it is a plaid, but notice how you see very little of the plaid, just the impression. Then here you see a little bit more, but when you get to the eight and a half, if you were hooking a leaf, it almost puts the vein right in it. And in here, what we have is outlined in a four, filled in in a six, using an outline like a silhouette edge to make the leaf look three-dimensional. And that works very well. We did a video a year, about a year ago on silhouettes and silhouette edge, and there's an article in the Rug Hooking Magazine about it. But by laying it a little bit lower and putting in a wider cut, it actually raises up off of the linen. Here, this is an eight with an eight and a half. Same thing, it comes to you. We're raising it up from a flat surface. Uh, we made the vein very chunky by using the eight and a half and letting the texture show. So your size of cut does play into it. You can mix your size of cuts to get what you would like in your leaf. And it's also a good way to get dimension without sculpting, without using mixed media, if you just like to use wool. So size of cut, very, very important, very good tool in our toolbox. Let's talk about some leaves. Um, here is a very staid leaf, a very common way to do leaves. Green is a neutral. We've talked about that. This is many shades of different yellow greens and sagey greens. Green is one of the few colors that you can mix blue green, yellow green, dark green, light green into one leaf and still have it look like a leaf. So this is where you can use your stash, use your nibs and nabs. This is very dark veins, so that's what you see first. But as you can see, this has been echoed out in different values but then a gold was added. A uh, very, very common way to hook a leaf, very interesting way to hook a leaf. Uh, you know, this is your, you know, if you don't know what to do, do this, do this one here. And if you have solids in your stash and don't know what to do with them, perfect way to hook a leaf, add a leaf, perfect way to use it for acorns. If you notice, these are just shades of yellow gold. And this was a really cool tweedy texture. You know, we have some of these really loose, weavy textures. You just pull them up after you hook the cap, and they look just like an acorn cap. 
But this is a very um, basic way to hook your leaf. And using um, one, two, three, four, five different, there's five different shades besides the vein, but makes six in this leaf. So greens like to play with each other and play with each other well. And we'll look at some wools later on. This is another one where all the greens play together. Acorns aren't as defined, they're just there. But if you look at this, we have yellow green, blue green, dark green, uh, where you want, you know, how you put it in there is up to you. The mechanics of hooking the leaves, we did the video around this time last year, so you can refer to that. But we're more looking at the colors and how the colors create different things. Now here's your red leaf with orange, but you can use green as a neutral and really create many, many different waves. And if you notice, there's hardly any veins in all of these. These were just hooked to give you the shape of the leaf, the impression of the leaf, but not tell you everything. And these are hooked in a four and a five is the size of the cut on that one. Here we go, leaf peepers. Leaf peepers, we've gone over the mechanics of how to hook it, but now we're looking at size of cut. We are looking at what we want to be predominant, uh, colors put together. And here's where a teal and a gold, this is done in a six. The leaf was hooked in an eight, then tipped in a four. So your different size of cut, along with your values, your color values, gave you this dimension. The same thing here. Uh, this one almost has that ghost-like vein that they get as they fade out as leaves fade out so here you have yellow green blue green you have your greens all playing together again and then reds here's where you can introduce reds purples but size of cut size of cut plays a key i we have eight we have six and we have four and the fours are up here to tip everything and they just add a little bit of a silhouette edge. They add a little bit of dimension, but really the background and how it's swirled lets them move. Same thing here, size of cut. Now this one, this one doesn't have um, a silhouette edge. It's just there, it's a corner. So this is an eight with a six. Uh, we didn't really tip it maybe once or twice with a little bit of a four, but this is just two sizes of cuts, so not as much. You don't see, you see the tips because of the value change, but not as much that it jumps off the rug. Here, same thing with greens. Every green from neon green to blue to gray, but size of cut. The size of cut really plays into it. Now this has a six vein, and this is all done with sixes until it's tipped a little bit here and there in the fours. This one is hooked in eights, and this one here being hooked in eights, you see the vein a lot more than this one. There is no tipping in the fours. Again, it's a corner, so we wanted to anchor it. Uh, and so we just did the echoing to create a little bit more motion around it. And how you hook your background, whether it's echo, whether it's uh, puzzle pieces, which come into play here and here, that also helps when you use different sizes of cuts. So what happens when you don't? We're gonna move over to this rug here. Uh, this rug here doesn't have a change in size of cut. So they had to create some kind of a dimension in this. So what they did with it was they, they outlined. See, this is very flat. Uh, this is a very flat piece. It is a dyed piece. Uh, it was outline and fill, not, did not change the size of the cut, but the, and did not change the size of the cut So they, on the outside. Uh, when they got this in, it was probably extremely flat compared to other things, so they came with a tweed and they outlined it in the same size cut. The tweed hides the size of the cut, but this is really, really the most simplistic way to do a leaf and to get some dimension out of a leaf. This leaf here is the same thing. This leaf is the same thing. They started using what they thought would make a leaf didn't change the size of the cut to tip. 
If they had tipped it, it would have had more direction. So they filled it in in block style with no vein. Again, no vein, no vein. So these are pretty much the most simplistic ways uh, to hook a leaf. But if you're not getting dimension, then the outline will work or filling it in on the inside. The way to get more dimension out of this one would have been just to hit or miss a vein in here in orange or brown. And that would have really added a lot more to that leaf. Um, I think that as this person progressed with this rug, they realized that. And here they started to put the vein in. But if they had chosen even this color to put it in, we would have had a little more motion and not as blocky and flat. So size of cut really does play into it. Now, so what happens when you want the leaves to really just be there, but not be there? Like in a pictorial, you want to equate to a season, spring, summer, fall, and you, you don't want the leaves to be there. You want to give the impression that's where you use a small cut and then like a four and a six cut or a six and an eight cut depending on or an eight and a nine cut depending on how you hook or what you hook in and you group it by the colors but not solid if you notice this is not solid across this has the sky sneaking through as with all trees what gives a dimension to the trees is the sky. The sky lets you know the shape of the tree. So if you have time today, go outside and look at the trees. The trees are defined by the sky, not by just the tree itself. So by doing that and just putting in the bare shape of it, you get the, this is the impression of leaves. And it's there, you know what it is, you know, and all the greens are down here for the hills of the fields, but you know what season it is, and you know there's the leaves on the tree. So this is an impressionist way to do it. And different size cut, this happens to be six and four. Um, in this case, what I wanted to show or what was going to be shown as the season on the greens was hooked larger than the green. This is a six, this is a four cut, so that it becomes predominant. So impression of leaves, great way to do it, but just remember if there are leaves on a tree and you're hooking the tree, you have to have sky. The sky makes the trees dance. Another way to get dimension, paisley. There's paisley in the veins. This is a very simplistic two tones of green outlined with a gold. Needed some help. Joan must have known it needed some help. She took her paisley that had gold in it and outlined it, then echoed it out. Knew it needed a vein. Probably put the vein in first because it has receded so much. Remember, what you put in first recedes. So uh, this is where she used paisley. And this is a four cut, four cut, this is a six cut. Then we went back to a four cut again. So that's how it starts to lift off the background and show its dimension. So now we're gonna switch gears. We're gonna switch gears and we're gonna talk about floral leaves. So when you have leaves that are in a floral and you have a lot of them. And let's face it, some of the floral patterns we have have a lot of leaves. And I'm thinking of Lucetta in particular. So you can choose a palette or, like I said, green is a neutral. There are blue greens, yellow greens, a little dark green, and you can combine them. Not all the leaves have to be the same in a floral. And that's very, very important. The leaves how you want the leaves to cup or you want them flat is how you use the different colors. In this case, you come with a medium green. You have a medium background too. You have a medium green, then you start with your light. And if you follow my finger on this, you can see that it's pieces. It's not shaded, it's pieces laid in. So here's your medium, here's your light with a little bit of dark, and then a little different color medium. 
So this is a silver gray in different values. And by using the values, not size of cut, this is all in a three and a four, uh, it was laid in in different pieces to give you that leaf and to give you the cup. Now, this is where a lot of people have asked for this and they struggle. You start, this one started dark. This one does not have to start dark. Each leaf is its own person. Remember that. Each leaf is its own person. So this leaf starts light and you can see it goes just like that. Then comes your medium. But to give it that turn, you went to dark. The shadow in here helps create the cup, uh, probably because with a medium background, it didn't cup as much as it should have, so the shadow was put in. But here you have the three pieces going to the dark, where the dark was started here, and every leaf is its own person. So when you get into here with the leaves, even the veins change, the colors change. This one has more of a blue-green to a green. This one has it splattered. Not any of these leaves are the same. That's a good thing because that draws your eye all the way around. Now, how do we do an open leaf? An open leaf is considered this, where it almost looks like um, a taco. Let's call it a taco leaf, where you would fill it. So in this case, we went dark, medium, medium, but used light. We used a medium to create the depth and used a light to cap it. In this one, we used dark. We used a dark to cap it and put in a medium value. This one here has more depth because of the light. This one not as much, but you can still see in. And using the blue, the light in the center and the dark on the outside. So there are two ways to do it if your leaf is like a taco. And you'll remember that because it's a little bit different way to say it. You can put the light on the ringe and go in with a medium to dark, or you can put the dark on the ringe of it. This is all just on the fringe ringe of it, and then a light in the middle. The most asked question is how to do a turnover leaf. How do we hook a turnover leaf? What is a turnover leaf? Here is a turnover leaf right here. It actually turns over. In this case, again, because of the medium background, the shadow was put in. This turnover starts dark from the stem, goes to medium and light. Here's the most important thing with a turnover. The dark does not just start here. That creates a knob, not a turnover. You have to come down. You have to come down into the light and sneak in a few loops that are low, and then you go up and over and then go to medium, then go to light. So it goes a dark to a medium to a light. And the light is finished almost into a try a tip, like a paintbrush tip. Then we start again with our darkest value, but we start along the light with a single row. And how you hook this is you hook this row first, just like that. Then you fill in, then you fill in your tip. In this case, medium background, medium value, we had to tip it with a tail, a loop, and a tail with a little bit of light. Okay, so this is a turnover. Turnovers take a little bit of time, a little bit of practice. The colors change, the values change based on your background. It's not a simple leaf to hook. It is a fun leaf to hook if you think of it as a roller coaster. Just think of it as a roller coaster, and you'll have more fun with it. And also, as soon as you finish hooking your turnover leaf, you need to put in your background to make sure that it has a turnover. On that note, we're going to go over to another turnover, okay? And this piece here has about four or five turnovers. And... Um, after the last time we talked about leaves, we got so many questions on turnovers. I think it, it's, it behooves all of us to take the time to look at the different ways. First, we'll look at the leaves. The leaves are almost the same colors. Okay, they're the same colors, but they're distributed differently. So again, each leaf is its own person. 
Okay, here we are with the turnover. So we're starting, now this is a light background, so we're starting with the dark. The darkest put in a little bit of a, a vein in. So this is our medium value to medium light. So we have a medium, then we have a medium light. And here we have the light starting, just like in the other one down here. Here comes the roller coaster. The light goes just like that to the tip, just like that. Then the medium value comes right in here to finish it. So if you don't go all the way down into this leaf, that's the mistake most people make, you're not gonna get the turnover. So we have dark, medium, medium light, then very light, then a medium right into here. But look at that curve, and that creates the turnover. Another type of turnover is right here. Here we have the dark in the center. We have the medium because we have a light background. Here comes the light because this is a medium. Look how far we're starting down. And here it comes, here it comes, wee like that, and comes up into here. But notice it doesn't come here. It would look like a boomerang if we did. We're on a roller coaster, not a boomerang. So the medium value comes right into here. Here comes your medium. And then your lights are filled in here. Again, here's where the light goes, but it's not filled in that way. It's filled in with a medium light. And then you have your light, medium, dark. Here's the tip in here. You see this tail loop tail. This was the tweak after it was hooked. Here's your tail loop tail. That created the shadow to help make the turnover. Also, because it was a light background and we had the light here, we needed to use a little bit of a medium in here, okay? But these are tweaks after you hook it. This was put in after you hook. This is put in after you hook. Let's go down here. This is the turn. If you want to practice turnovers, tulip and lilac is the pattern for you because there's every type of turnover here. This leaf is in the middle, <clears throat> excuse me, in the middle of a bunch of leaves. So to, to distinguish it with the darks, it's outlined in the light. And then it goes to medium, to medium, to dark, okay? Media, light, medium, light, medium, dark. And it comes up here. So here we go on the roller coaster. So the light is here, the light is here, and it goes out this way. So it comes in like this, goes out like that. Then your mediums come in, your medium lights, and then your mediums. So here's your medium, your medium light, and then here's the light. Now, because this is a, a fold without a shadow, the light continues all the way down. So the darkest in here is what creates the shadow. Little different. We also had to distinguish it. It, it could have had, this could have had a different color into here, a darker color, but there you are, there's the leaf. Here's another turnover. This turnover um, is amongst the flowers, amongst the lilacs. So here we have dark, medium, medium, light, light. So when we get to the turnover, this one is not as distinguished. It needed, needs a tweak, but we'll, we'll talk about it. The light goes to here. Here comes your medium, your medium, your, your, here comes your medium light, your medium. It needed a little dark twinge right in there. In this fold, it needed a tail, a loop, and a tail, and it would have created more of a fold. The tweak was put up here and equates more to the lilac than it does to the turnover. If the tweak was right in here, it would have turned over. But as you can tell, here's the light, here's the medium light, here's the medium. And the light coming up here is where she crossed over. She went like that. She stopped here. And if this had been medium, it would have created more like this leaf. But she didn't. She continued the light. So here comes the roller coaster up that way. And that's how she hooked it. It was up this way. Last turnover, I promise. And these are, and I know everybody would like an apple turnover after this is over. All right, turnover. This is a very subtle turnover because it's on a light background. Her light starts here 
roller coasters up to here. Here's her mediums into here. If she had just put a little bit of dark, she learned as she went along. She had just put a little bit of dark in here, this turn would have been more pronounced. But this is another way to do a very subtle turnover. This is the subtlest of all of them. So if you want to practice your turn turnovers, this will really, really give you a lot to look at. So let's talk about some wools, okay? Let's talk about greens, some plaids. We're gonna do textures first, and then we're gonna go into some dyed, um, but not valued. If you don't like to use dyed wool and you want values, um, the sage stripe would work very well because you have the different values clearly defined. So dark, medium, light, and you can create a leaf from that, especially if you wanna practice turnovers or you wanna practice leaves in general using the three, three shades of a green. So this is a great texture if you don't wanna use dyed wool or values. This is boxwood, and while it appears brown or almost black, it does change by what you put around it. So don't always think um, they have to be green or they have to be start as green. This has gold, it has a green brown in it. And when you put it with dark pine and flopsy, you can see how you can start to create a leaf. Also, if you went to elegant eggplant to create it, uh, you can create a leaf that way and if you add in British green, while this is an extremely dark leaf, but it's an extremely rich leaf. The other thing that you can do is British green, you can dissect your texture if you love textures like I do. Here's your dark, here's your medium, here's your light. And if you want a tip, you come in with the eggplant. Or if you want a different type of a tip, you can come in with your dark pine herring. So you can let your texture do the shading for you by cutting it this way and practicing. Great way to use it, you'll get great leaves out of it. If you like dark green, you can pair it with the blue green, compare it with a sagey green. If you notice, nothing fights each other here, and this is where all the greens play together and green is a neutral. Perfect pastel plaid. Another, another uh, great fill-in for a leaf as a light. Uh, you can take your dark, medium, light, although these values are very close. It would be a little muddy, but if you paired it with uh, blue spruce and maybe a little flopsy, then you would also get a muted leaf or a muted stalk on a flower leaf, but it would be very, very nice. All right, let's go to a few more textures and then we'll look at one or two dyed wools. Old Cape Cod Plaid, a lot of you have heard about this. It's a translucent wool. No, it, it, you can't see through it, but there's so much color running through this that it changes by what you put around it. So <clears throat> if I wanna ramp up the greens and use this as my medium, as my neutral, uh, we can do that. But if I want it, if I want it to go more into a red or a purple, I'm actually going to pair it up with British green or elegant eggplant. And it turns more pink, as you can see. So this is a great one to start with as a light and pair it up, Old Cape Cod Plaid, and pair it up with your other colors. You can even pair Old Cape Cod Plaid with Campfire Girls and then add in a little bit of this for light, medium, dark, just to start, if you like to use textures. You do not always have to use dyed wools to create these leaves. In dyed wools, if you like dyed wools, we have quite a plethora of colors, and of course you do too. Oh, almost forgot. One of the favorite, favorite ones for leaves this time of year is Gamekeeper. And what you saw in the sample that I had where I used the different sizes at the beginning, that was Gamekeeper. And it is now buried in the bottom of the pile, but that's okay. Oh, it's over here, okay. So, here we go. Here's Gamekeeper cut. This is the wool. 
and here it is hooked into the leaves in different size cuts. Here's this piece, the bigger pieces, the red piece, the gold piece. So there you go. Great to use by itself. You can dissect it. Uh, looks great with blue spruce. Great for this time of year if these are the leaves you're looking to hook. If you're looking to do a turnover, you can use this as your medium or medium dark and go to the blue olive and go to Flopsy and work a turnover uh, leaf with texture. So dyed. Never underestimate chartreuse. It adds a lot to leaves. It lets you focus if you want the veins, if you want the tips. And this is our Lima Lima Mari. It's got a lot of highs and lows, yellow, blue, a lot of different colors. And if you are the one, one of those who likes a lot of color, you can always add chartreuse or a limey green. If you like to get all your colors in one piece, then a tricolor would work. You have your yellows, your oranges, and your uh, reds, your pinkish reds, and this is Storybook Cottage Garden, and you can actually work a light, a medium, and a dark. So you would get the three to make the leaf. And by using different size cuts, we love to use them in textures, but we don't talk about them in dyed wool. It's the same thing in dyed wool. You'll show more of the modeling or less of the modeling based on the size of the cut. If these are a little bright and you put your sunshades on when I put them on the table, then autumn bounty may, uh, August bounty may be the one. These are more muted. You have your light, your medium, your dark, and this would make a great practice for a turnover or just a regular leaf this time of year. And you can see how it ramps up with this, or you can play it down with this, so, um, or make it a little more subtle with Flopsy. Another great one to add in different places, especially for leaves in a floral, is Aurora, because you have all the colors here and probably some colors of your flowers. Why does this work? It makes great veins, it makes great tips, it nods back to your floral, uh, but this is great for floral leaves, uh, as well as any of these are. So last but not least is another standard way, and we went over this one time before, but it's sitting here with the strawberry basket, and here you have two sides with a dark orange or a red to nod back to the strawberry. If you are ever in need of a vein, nod back to the other elements of the rug. It is the way that we have always done leaves. It's a way that if you're stuck for a color, go back to the reds, the peaches, whatever's in the rug and put that in the vein and it doesn't have to be all the same like this one is. But you can do that and it will nod into the rug and it will always go. And here's where you have the blue greens playing with the um, yellow greens and the dark greens. So they all do go together very, very well. So I hope you've enjoyed our leafy discussion and it's many, many different ways to hook them. I hope you have a wonderful September and we'll see you in October. Have a nice week.